Bria here and I'm back in the USA. I'm back in my tiny home shed. <laughs> who would have guessed? Um, for those of you who don't follow my channel, I started off as an alternative lifestyle, kind of nomad life girl. I was traveling around, living in my car for a period of time. Eventually, I built a shed, which I'm in now, which is like my mini tiny home. But I moved away 2023 in October to take on an English teaching job in Thailand. And I was in Thailand living there for six months. And now I decided to come home back here in the good old USA, back in Georgia and back to my nomadic lifestyle, which luckily I'm able to live out of my car and my shit, but I'm back. And I think that I owe it to my community and all the people there who are watching me that have been here. Hearts to y'all, like my Discord family, people who have been staying in touch with my videos as I've traveled throughout Thailand. I really appreciate you guys because I literally felt like I did like a pivot. I went from like alternative lifestyles, hard on the car life, travel domestically, all that stuff. And then I was like, pew, I'm out of here. And then my content went in a very different direction because i was no longer really doing the car life stuff but i would argue i was still doing alternative lifestyles because how many people do you know just say okay well i'm gonna live somewhere for half the year in another country and then go back to their own country and try and work it out let alone living alternatively in like a car or a shed or a vehicle rv whatever your case is um yeah, so I'm back and I wanted to share with you guys eight reasons why I decided to come back. So before we get into those eight reasons, which I love to do on my live streams, um, tips and reasons, um, hit the like button if you like this type of content. If you don't want to see this, don't hit the button. But I really want to know who enjoys like this kind of tips based um, live conversational content versus like vlogs or days in the live content or um, you know tip space content that's more so like me recording it versus me getting on here live with you guys and answering any questions that you may have which I'm still learning how to use this I'm on my tablet but it's supposed to be working good now I think they did an update where you can like use your tablet horizontal or vertical so hopefully it works well I'm horizontally on here Hopefully my chat will stay up because usually it just disappears, but we'll see what happens during the course of this video. So let's just jump into the eight reasons why I decided to move back to the USA versus staying living in Thailand six plus months. So I wrote it down y'all, excuse me, which I always do. I still got my little Thailand beat up notebook, but it's working well and I got like a good amount of pages left in it. So I'm going to keep using it for these live streams. But the first reason that I put, and I'm going to give you guys pros and cons for all of these reasons, um, because I think that is fair, unbiased to say like, okay, well, this is a reason why, but also let's look at the other side of it. So the first reason why I decided to move back to the USA is because of money and more specifically because I make more money in the USA and my money is more valuable um, currency exchange wise USD than in Thailand with bot. So to go into that, it's quite simple. It, it, it really is what it is. It's like living in the US, you make US dollar. Um, you can probably make a higher hourly rate a lot of people in Thailand don't really get paid hourly. They get paid more so daily um, or even monthly. So for my circumstances, I was getting paid monthly. So I had to really budget out what I was spending because it wasn't like, okay, you get paid at the end of the week or you get paid at the end of two weeks. It was like, okay, well, you get paid at the end of the month. So you got to make sure you're on it. Not only do you need to have all your bills like at the end of the month, you need to survive throughout the month. So I had to be way more financially like assertive, I guess, in Thailand. However, in America, like I make way more money, but 
I have to spend way more money like just going to the gas station I spent like $60 to fill my tank up the other day like $60 in Thailand would get me uh, my motorbike rental for the month so it's quite different in that aspect um, but at the end of the day I need to make money like I have to pay bills and just because I want to travel doesn't mean that Uncle Sam is not knocking at my door like honey money you know, so I'm like, okay, let me go back to America so I can make money a little bit quicker and pay off my bills quicker because truthfully, if I was only making bot, that would suffice to cover my lifestyle in Thailand and my travel in Thailand and my food and my clothes and things in Thailand. It would not suffice to cover my taxes, my bills, my insurance, maybe credit cards, things of that nature, things that I still have to pay off living in America. So a lot of people say like, well, if you're going to move abroad, you should probably just cut ties. Be like, I've paid off all my bills. I don't own anything there. Like I've cut ties as much as possible. No subscriptions, none of that. So that you can really go and move at the way you want to move. But if you're someone who's like, okay, I'm going to travel for a certain amount of time and possibly come back. Definitely keep that in mind. Like taxes and insurance and bills and stuff don't go away. So you can travel abroad, but you still have to pay for that stuff. And if you're making an abroad um income it may be a fraction of what you would make at home working you know similar hours so that was my number one reason was that like i have things and a lot of goals that i want to accomplish one of them being buying land one day and i just felt like that's not something i could really work on or save to working in that country or getting paid in that currency so that's not to say that there's anything wrong with living abroad or you can't survive or you're not getting paid enough no you're in another country so in that country you're great but when you come back home and you look at what you're paying back at home and the bills that you have at home it might put a little stress on you of like you need to snap back into reality like your citizenship is in another country and you need to pay those bills so i'll just leave it at that but let's go into the number two reason why i decided to move back to america so let me look that reason i wrote is my people and what i mean by that is living in a foreign country um especially for me as a black woman you don't often see people who look like you you know and for me personally that doesn't really bother me i love to travel i love meeting new people i'm very comfortable in environments that are uncomfortable for me but at the same time it does get a little lonely or tiring when you're like wow i wish that like i could relate or see someone who looks like me or have someone to kind of like banter with about our similarities um especially when it comes to looks you know for example a country like thailand that i lived in everyone there for the most part is thai and if they're not they're of you know some asian descent so they have similar um traits you know how they look they have similar characteristics things of that nature but me as a black woman i just stick out like a sore thumb it's like you're clearly not asian you know what i'm saying so i had no problem with that but to a certain extent i was like man i just want to see some people who look like me like and i think that's something i didn't really appreciate before i think a lot of times because me as a traveler i couldn't wait to get out there and be like i want to see new people and new things and experience new things and going out there i realized like i love my people <laughs> like i love my people so much and it's not to say i don't love anyone else but it's just to say like you gain an appreciation for other people at the same time that you gain an appreciation for your own people so as i was out there experiencing all this culture and this different culture in the back of my head i was like oh my god i miss my food at my house you know i was like oh my god i miss how me and my friends joke oh my god i miss how i braid my hair and people understand that and people around me do the same thing you know so missing your people is a very big deal regardless of if you move to thailand or anywhere you go you have to like connect with yourself and understand like am i the type of person who could really move away for like a year move away for two years you know i moved away for six months and i'm telling you i had times where i was really like i could end it all now i could just take the what's left of the money and just fly home and just end it all now you know and like i had to like convince myself like girl relax like accomplish what you came here to do 
you really have goals that you're trying to accomplish so don't just give up because no one around here looks like you you know but it's something to keep in mind um and that is one of the reasons why i came home because after six months i was like mm, i kind of want to see people who look like me a little bit like i feel like that's good for my mental health not that i would never go back or that i would never live in another country but i i needed that time i'm not at the level yet where i feel like i could move away somewhere for a complete year i would be like heartbroken and missing all the people who make me who i am you know so that's that let's see what the number three reason is let me check the chat hi maurice hawkins this is come home to cleveland i would like to meet you i will be visiting cleveland um sometime this year i'm still not sure when i'm like trying to plan it out but i mean that's home honey like i go to cleveland it's not a problem i don't even need to fly i just drive up there but keep in touch Martavia says, greetings, Bria. Excited to see you back home in America. You look amazing. Thank you so much. I feel better, honestly. Like, I feel like I had, like, a little Thailand boot camp where I was like, I'm just going to go out of the country and get my shit together, for real, because I did not feel good. I was going through, like, deaths in the family. I was going through a lot of, like, depression issues at that time. Not that it related to my lifestyle. I'm still very much so into like nomad life, alternative lifestyles, traveling, all of that. But headspace wise, I feel like going to Thailand and coming back, I feel like so much better and I feel like I look better. So thank you. KB says, Bria, you look phenomenal, girl. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I try barely, but I try. Barely. Okay, let's get into number three reason. So the number three reason why I left Thailand and moved back to the U.S. is because Thailand doesn't have seasons. It only has like two seasons. And the seasons is hot as fuck or hot and rainy. Excuse my language. You know, but literally, I'm not even joking. It's either it's hot as fuck or it's hot and rainy. And I drove a motorbike and everything and I just couldn't see myself really living there when it was rainy like during rainy season because the way they described it was like i mean it's going to be warm no matter what but like certain times of year it's just going to be pouring pouring randomly pouring pouring randomly it may stop it may start like you never know and with the culture of like riding bikes i just didn't feel comfortable with that and i also didn't feel comfortable living in an environment where i constantly have to call someone and take me wherever i have to go because i'm not really a city girl y'all like i'm more of like a suburbs type girl I'm more of like, I have my own car, I do my own thing, I park at the house, nobody's near my house. Like, I don't really like too many people around my space and I also don't like having to depend on too many other people for daily tasks. So for me, I was like, no, this isn't something that seems suitable for me because again, I would be teaching English, right? And I'm like, if I'm going to school every day to teach my kids, I don't wanna be going to school riding my bike in the rain. And I do also don't wanna have to be like, dependent on rides every day to get me to and from school take me to the grocery store take me wherever i need to go um it didn't seem like the lifestyle for me but in thailand it's pretty much around like six months or so that it's just like hot and then you have another six months or so that's like hot but it might start raining and i just kind of avoided the hot but it may start raining time but other than that like the main reason is that like seasons in general like i'm a midwest girl i'm from cleveland ohio like i'm used to having four seasons like fall winter spring summer and moving somewhere where i'm like it's just hot all the time i kind of got in this headspace so i'm like i'm on a summer vacation 24 7 that's how i feel i'm like i'm on summer vacation so anytime it was the weekend or any days i got off i wanted to travel i wanted to go to the beach i wanted to go to the island do whatever which is beautiful awesome and amazing but to a certain extent i feel like you get like delusional about like regular life you know i'm like life isn't just always party party when's the next vacation when's the next cute picture you can take like that's not what it is um and i feel like in thailand with the lack of seasons it kind of messed with my chakras and my yin and yang a little bit i'm just saying um because with seasons in america for example i feel like spring is like a rejuvenation like new growth type season i feel like fall is like a shedding season of things that are not suiting you i feel like winter is a resting season where you kind of just rest and you know don't kind of push yourself to do things that 
you know, maybe you normally would. And then summer is like, let's go. We getting it. Everybody out in the summer, you know? Um, but in Thailand, I just felt like I was always going, 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 going. Like, I felt like I never had any rest because it was always like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing we're doing? There's always some event. There's always something going on. There's always somewhere to go. So that's another reason why I moved home because I just wanted to feel like that balance of like, sometimes I'm going to be high. Sometimes I'm going to be low. Sometimes I'm going to be traveling. Sometimes I'm going to be sitting at the house with my family, you know? Um, but I will say that when I got home, to Georgia, I was like raining fall winter weather right now. I'm confused because it's pollen everywhere and there's fall winter weather. You guys, look who came to say hi. Hold on, Mama, say hi. Oh my god, oh my god, softers, say hi to the live. Say hi, they didn't get to see you for a long time. Everybody thought that I abandoned you. I told them you was at home with the family. They're like, where is Tolfi? She's right here, for those of you guys who are concerned. And she's thicker than ever. Thicker than ever. Because she was not on the diet that I prescribed while I was gone. But she's healthy. Okay, mama. Go play. All right, y'all. I'm going to get into my number four reason why I move back to... Oh, my God. Having a cat, anyone knows they shed during the summer, but is it even summer, spring? Because I'm wearing a winter coat right now. I'm so confused. Okay, number four, I put individuality. <clears throat> this one's really important to me because if you look at me right now, or in general, any time of the day, I do not look like someone who should be teaching anyone. Like, I don't even look like a teacher. I just look like Brieski. I look like Bria Main, you know? And when I moved to Thailand, I quickly adapted to dressing a certain way that was more appropriate for the culture even as a teacher i was only allowed to wear pants one day out of the week i was always wearing skirts and dresses so i really embraced my femininity a lot while i was in thailand but at the same time my individuality of me as a person like the way i like to carry myself how i talk my cadence how i dress i felt like it was kind of like hindered a little bit it was like okay well that's not really what we want to see you know like even my tattoos like I have them covered now because I'm cold, but typically my tests are showing, they're thriving, they're greased up, they shine in, you know, like I like to show off my body like as art and that's not something I was really able to do there. So I feel like individuality is something that's very much so Western and American. Like if someone's out there, you may think they look a fool, someone else may think they look great, but at the end of the day, people are like, yes, do you, you know, that's not, you're not going to get that out east, no, people are going to be like, why can't you fall in line, why are you doing the most, you know what I'm saying, so I was wearing pencil skirts and button down shirts every day, and then on my off time, it was like, okay, well, I can wear my own clothes, but I got to be mindful of the community seeing me and then I'm also a teacher and that might be someone's parents and blah, 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 blah you know. So I did come home because I kind of wanted to express my individuality a little bit more. And that's something that I appreciate more now that I lived abroad where I'm like, even if you wanted to like date someone or talk to someone, like there's no holding hands, kissing in public, showing effect. Like there's really none of that. That's very private. Um not necessarily saying that's what i want to do but i'm just saying like just the person who i am in general i think i'm more like <laughs> out there um i think i'm an ambivert i like to have my personal time but i'm also very extroverted and i think living there i felt like stifled to a certain extent with my creativity i was able to do travel vlogs and stuff like that and show you guys what i was doing but i don't think i was able to fully express myself like physically if that makes sense. But let me check on the comments. Let me see. Molly Cake says, pretty kitty. Yes, she's the love of my life. I'm so glad that I could come home to her. Like I told my family, I was like, as long as I have my cat and my car, I'm good. I don't need anything else. Like I'm blessed, but I love my cat. She's like my soul animal. Like she feels what I feel. It's crazy. Lucky 80 says Big Mama Toffee. I knew y'all miss Toffee. Y'all honestly probably miss Toffee more than me. And I told her, I'm like, you're going to be making more 
appearances this year because you're gonna have to make me some money because folks out here with their cats and these people love these cats more than they love the folks let's be honest coffee say hi one more time so i can well, just one more time she don't like it no she just be living her own life she's a grown woman toffee is 11 years old which means she grown grown she's only my baby but she really don't got time for none of y'all her face says it she says i have no time all right all right you can go okay she's spoiled she's so spoiled Antonio Jackson says, seems like they're more reserved overseas. I would agree. Um, I think there's no better way to say it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think Americans are quite too sexualized to some extent or quite too out there. Um, but I think there's a good medium we can meet at. Um, I learned a lot from the reservedness and the hierarchy and the dedication to like respect for levels of different people um but it's just but i also love the fact that i can travel and see other cultures and i don't think anything they're doing is wrong i just think it's something that we can take from each other like they can and i can learn from them but yes very much so quite reserved dog city's finest what's up i'm back i've really been back i'm not gonna lie i've been back i've been hiding i've been like in hiding because Honestly, I just needed to sleep a lot. I've been having like jet lag. I've been like, what's going on with me? I can't stay awake. I'm not productive. I don't want to shoot any videos. Like, it's been a stress a little bit, but I gave myself some grace. I told myself, I'm like, I'll give you two weeks. Two weeks when you get home to just sleep, rest, spend time with family, catch up with people. And then it's time to like get back to my nomad family because i truly miss you guys like i had to travel to get my shit together but like ain't shit changed i'm still in the discord i'm still waiting for y'all to talk to me in the discord y'all be sleeping on me but i'm back in the shed now so i'm be chatting a lot more but thanks for joining my live stream i thought i was gonna have like three people in here but i'll take what i can get let's see jay jum says happy to see you're doing good Thank you. I'm doing quite well. I'm healthy. I'm walking. I'm eating. I probably gained a couple pounds since I've been back to the U.S. Eating all this amazing food, y'all. I had like Chipotle. I've eaten like my pop spaghetti, chili. I made like a pork curry. Like we've been going wild. But I'm about to get back on my little healthy Thailand diet I was trying to continue. But I'm back and I feel great. And it's a little dim in here, but I think I look decent. Antonio Jackson said, would you go back? I would definitely go back. I would definitely go back. I would love to go back with a partner. And if not like a, you know, partner, partner, like a close friend to just have that experience with someone. I've done it myself like alone. And I think to have it with someone like it would be like top, top dollar because it's already cheap enough with one person. If you can get a partner or someone to go with you, like crazy, crazy. And even if I had someone, I may have stayed longer. But because I went by myself, I was like, mm, I kind of want to go home and see my pops and eat some spaghetti and see my cat and check on my car. All right, y'all. Let me get into the number five reason why I came back. Because we got eight of these reasons. So let me try and push through these. And I still have Toffee's hair on me. Oh, my God. Number five I put is language. Um, basically saying that since I moved out to Thailand, it was very difficult to have like deep conversation, like meaningful conversation with people like in the English language. Um, most conversations that I had were like broken English or broken Thai. We're both just trying to understand each other. Like I'm not in your country, you don't speak my language. And then for the people who did speak English, they were more so like colleagues, people I work with, people who were there to assist me with the job. It wasn't more so like friends, you know? So language wise, I found myself feeling kind of lonely at certain times where 
if I wanted to express myself, I would typically have to call home to family members and there's a time difference. So that was often a problem where you're like, okay, well, I want to call right now because it's daytime for me and I'm going through something, but at home, my family is asleep. So I could call, but then I'm going to wake them up and then that's not really, you know, so it's like you end up dealing with a lot of things on your own and not being able to like really like deeply express yourself um because people just simply don't understand it's a different language you know so that was the fifth reason why i wanted to come home is because after six months i was yearning for that like i was yearning for just being able to sit down with somebody have a conversation and talk about like something deeper than just like a surface level of like how do i get here how's your day uh, what are we eating? Did, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just really basic um, language that helped me to survive and travel throughout the country. But it wasn't language that, like, touched my soul and made somebody, which I think is really important, especially after a long period of time, like six months, you know? I'm like, okay, I've been talking to myself for six months <laughs> and talking to my family when they're available. Like, you need someone to talk to. So I would definitely say language is definitely important. No matter what country you move to, honestly, it doesn't have to be Thailand. It can be anywhere. If it's not a country that speaks your native language, keep in mind it's going to be difficult to connect with people. Like, as much as you want to, like, physically, like, language is so important. So, let's see. Ala Sumbo says, welcome back. Thank you. Maurice Hawkins says, do you speak Mandarin or Cantonese? I speak Mandarin. I speak like intermediate level Mandarin Chinese. Um, Antonio Jackson says, yeah, that's my goal to go there with a partner. It would see so much fun. It would seem, I think you said it would seem like so much fun. Um, yeah, I agree. Like there's so many things that I did like by myself and I'm so proud of myself, like challenge myself to do them. But I know for a fact it would have been so much easier with a partner physically as well as financially, even though things are so That's so weird. Well, let's see if it connects one more time and if not, I'll cancel it, but okay. It looks like it wants to reconnect now. There's probably some planes taking off. Who knows? Yeah, I think we're connected back. Okay, sorry, y'all. I got disconnected. Um, Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to catch up with the chat so I can get through the reasons. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let me see. I'm looking at the chat. I see Antonio Jackson chatting. Yeah, I felt that having a meaningful combo is very important. I mean, even if it's with your family on the phone, it's nice, but you kind of want to do it with someone in person at some point. Maurice Hawkins says, check out the Seychelles in the Indian Ocean. It's a part of Africa. I have a YouTuber that I follow. I love her so much, and she is planning on moving to Africa. I don't know for how long, but she does what I did, but hardcore. Like, she's like, I'm going to move there for six months, and I'm going to move somewhere else. Like she's crazy with it so yeah there's a lot more places that i want to travel it's on my bucket list and i'm gonna get to it okay while this signal i think is working well let me get through these last few reasons i think i was on number six so the number six reason why i left thailand and moved back to the u.s is because of food food the variety in food. I felt like there was a lack of variety in food. And I will say, if you're in like the bigger cities in Thailand, like Bangkok and stuff, they will have international cuisines. I've seen a lot of like French or Italian cuisines. They have some fast food restaurants like Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, McDonald's, KFC. They have things like that. But you have to think about living as like a typical, like regular person from there, someone like from the suburbs. Because I lived in the suburbs. I lived like an hour and a half out of the city of Bangkok. So these were just regular people working their jobs, going to school, like Thai people. And they're not eating McDonald's every day. They're not eating French food every day. They're eating local Thai food. So first of all, Thai food is absolutely amazing. Let me say that absolutely amazing there's a lot of pork chicken rice noodle egg there's a lot of green vegetables like green onions basil um cilantro 
they have avocados they have like chilies which is the most important like everything there is like super spicy and one of the main dishes that i always ate was like um minced pork basil and rice and it's so yummy it's so like a staple food but i got like tired of it after a while i would go to 7-eleven that's my favorite store i would eat like ham and cheese sandwiches and a bunch of like random things but when i would go to the city that's when i would eat like international cuisine like um italian food often or french food or like mexican food stuff like that i wasn't really able to get to that food locally Again, I had to travel an hour and a half out of my town just to get to the city, just to even have access to that type of food. So after a while, I found myself eating the same foods over and over and over again. Maybe my lack of culinary understanding of the food in that area definitely like contributed to that. But I did take a cooking class in Chiang Mai, but it was kind of too late. I went to Chiang Mai right before I came home to the U.S. So it's like, okay, you took a cooking class like at the wrong time, but... The food is good, don't get me wrong. I just felt like it just does not compare to the US. The US is like a melting pot. We have everybody here. So the food is that much greater. Like my access to Jamaican food, Mediterranean food, Japanese food, African food, Mexican food. It's how, like literally the list just continues in America, depending on where you're at. But I live in Atlanta, so get with it. Like we have good food and that kind of just left me like oh my god like i would watch people's instagram stories and be like oh my god they're eating so good and like because i live in atlanta like i would still get um ads about like the best restaurants in atlanta to eat and all this stuff i'm sitting here eating my rice and my pork and i'm like you know so no no shade to thailand but i need access to food and I mean different kind of foods. Mm. Antonio Jackson, he says, it's kind of like if we were to get Thai food in the States, it wouldn't hit the same, lol. Yeah, I would agree. Like, Thai food here does not taste the way that I got it back there. And Thai food there is so amazing. But again, it's like if you were here and you only could eat burgers every day, burgers and fries. Like, burgers and fries are so amazing. But, like, I don't want to eat that every day. After a while, I'm going to be like, can I get a taco? You know, like, can I try something new? So that's all it was. Like, after a while, I just got tired of it and tired of having to travel to get something different. Whereas where I live, at least, there's a wide variety of different kind of foods, like, everywhere. Hi, Joseph Homestead. Thanks for joining me. I'm actually on my seventh reason why I decided to move back home to the USA from Thailand, which is freedom of speech this one might be a shocker to a lot of people um thailand is known as the land of smiles um it's very liberal they have legal cannabis and they just recently legalized um gay marriage as well um i believe it's a wonderful amazing country having lived there six months and experienced how i was treated but freedom of speech i've noticed is something that is really an american thing it's very much so an American thing. Like there's kind of like a <clears throat> unwritten rules that say, watch your mouth. You know, like there's unwritten rules that are like, you don't say certain things about certain things. Where like in America, it's like for the most part, people say whatever they want to say. You might get canceled or people. I think they just don't want me to say what I have to say. That's what I'm starting to think. I'm starting to think they don't want me to say this part. I'm going to try and say it fast so they don't mess with me. Okay, so in Thailand, I felt like I had to be a lady. I had to wear a skirt all the time, and I had to be, like, super feminine, and I really loved embracing that. <laughs> Sorry, I had to run through it because I'm like, I don't know what's going on with this dream. But I feel like I can say how I feel. I can defend myself. I can walk it how I talk it, like, here in America. I felt like in another country, you have to be very mindful of their, like, societal, like, standards of how people carry themselves. And you don't really want to be someone who sticks out. We even see what's going on because, like, for me, it keeps looking like it's going in and out. But 
I'm almost done with my reasons. I just got one more. The last one was freedom of speech. And again, there's certain things you just don't say when you're in another country. Like in this country, people run their mouth like it's the end of the world. Like they don't care. People say things that they don't even think twice about. But in that country, it was very much so respect. Um, it's a Buddhist um, heavily country. So it's very much so about peace. And um, what's the word? harmony with everyone so like there's a hierarchy like children my students my teachers my elders my hierarchy my my monks you know so i'm like i really appreciate all that i have no problem with that type of culture i feel like i fit right in but i do kind of feel like i missed america where i can kind of like for lack of better words talk my shit a little bit and be like no i don't agree with that and this is what i think and this is how i feel like you not doing none of that over there you're not you're just not whether you're a woman or a man let's be honest like you're not gonna sit there and pop your shit in somebody's country who's not your country you're gonna watch your mouth and think twice about what you say whereas we come from a country where it's very much so like freedom of speech say what you want so that's my number seven reason <coughs> i got let's see Mm. let's see if she'll reconnect i got one more reason why i moved back and joseph like he lags yes i am moving back to us i'm in us right now i've been back for a little bit but it's just been a while since i've been online obviously because i don't have the best connection <laughs> but let me try to get through my number eight reason and we'll go ahead and end this video and we can chat in the chat section we can also chat in my Discord if you're part of my Discord, which, you know, I know some of you are. And then we can also chat in my member chat on Instagram if any of you guys want to join me there. But my number eight reason why I decided to move back to, I miss being able to tra travel domestically and just driving myself around, going to different states, visiting different things on my own. I felt like in Thailand, I was able to travel, but with the... Um, a culture that's really heavy on bikes um less people had cars more people had bikes the people had cars typically were people who had a little bit more money um but most people rode bikes and it's a little bit more dangerous they have like the top rate of like bike crashes or like car crashes and deaths and stuff there um i kind of miss just you know having my car in the u.s driving around going wherever i wanted and being there i often had to catch buses trains ferries planes rides taxis tuk tuks like there was all different types of transportations that i was able to utilize which is actually a positive but i kind of missed the simplicity of just being able to pick up the keys and drive my car whenever i felt like it basically so i hope that helps you guys in some way if there's someone out there who is interested in moving to thailand by chance or just moving abroad in general um i'll go over these reasons real quick one more time number one I moved back to America from abroad because I make more money here. Number two, because my people are here that look like me. Number three, because there are seasons here. Some countries you want. I'm going to continue talking. <laughs> Number four was individuality. Number five, language, being able to speak to people who speak your same language number six the variety and food that we have here in the u.s number seven freedom of speech and being able to pop your shit and at the least number eight was having my car and being able to drive domestically throughout the country that i so dearly love so again i got through all those eight reasons i'm sorry for the shaky connection let me check chat one more time to see if you guys had anything to say The last thing I'll comment on, um, does, yeah, I'm going to say, Antonio Jackson said, did people try to scam you like the foreigner tax? Um, I rarely got scammed. The most that I got close to being scammed was like taxi drivers trying to charge more. But in Thailand, it's very much so shamed upon to scam people. Again, it's a Buddhist country, so people really like take honor and respect and um not having 
controversy seriously so like i rarely experience any type of crime people may have tried to got over like at the apartments they may want to charge you more for your light bill or your water bill because you're a foreigner or they may want to charge you more for a beer but it's nothing really like in a dangerous type of sense so again i hope this information helped y'all and i miss y'all honestly like my nomad fam, I know y'all get around to watching it. You're probably out here driving around somewhere, but you're going to be like, okay, Breeski's back. Hop in the Discord and let's talk. Let's catch up, see what's going on because my birthday's coming up May 4th. I'm doing the nomad retreats. I'm going to be sending out personal invites up here soon. And for those of y'all who are interested, please join my Discord and chat with me there about it. I'm not going to really talk about it too much on YouTube other than like my community section just to see who's interested. But yeah, it's in less than a month. We're going to be at Stone Mountain. We're going to be camping out, car camping, having a good time. So hit me up about that. If you have any questions about what I talked about or any comments, just hit me up in the comment section. I tend to respond to all my comments and we can have a debate or not or agreeance about the topics that I talked to today about why I decided to leave living abroad and come back home. And it's not to say I'll never go abroad again, but until the next time I do and until the next time we chat... I love you. Peace out. See you.